was in 2013 in the presence and company of Rafael Tuju. Mm -hmm. I was then supporting Rafael Tuju. I have made this very consistently. In 20, uh, 20 um, was it 2010, when Ruto and Uhuru were in The Hague, Ruto's lawyer hired me, Karim Khan, mm -hmm. the current uh, prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, retained me as an expert witness. I never spoke with Ruto. I only dealt with the lawyers. So anybody spreading the rumor, like all the stupid Kenyan rumors, is just that, flagrantly false. Why would Miguna uh, be commissioned from Toronto to work for William Ruto? William Ruto has enough people in Nairobi. William Ruto has a full, a, a, a stadium full of people working for him. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And finally, everybody knows I cannot be bought. By the way, if I wanted money, if money was the issue, the easiest place to get money and maybe get more money is Uhuru Kenyatta. He's the president. The treasury, they, they raid the treasury every day. Do you understand? Mm. So, so money is in a zimio. Money is not with Ruto. But if money was with Ruto, Ruto already has a team working for him. They have not approached me. I've not approached them. I have no interest in that kind of work right now. Everybody knows that ideologically, I, I'm not with Ruto, ideologically. I'm not with Raila, ideologically. I'm a very radical, socialist-oriented person, all right? Mm -hmm. But when I talk politics, the practical realities of politics, you cannot confuse that with ideology. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And right now, as we speak, because we have to be realistic, there are two leading candidates in Kenya. It is Raila Odinga and William Ruto. William Ruto will beat Raila Odinga 70 to 30%. That's, that's almost a fact. And by the way, I've spoken with some of those pollsters that are publishing rubbish for your consumption, and they agree with me. They tell me in confidence that I'm right. All right? Mm. They tell me that my analysis is head on. These analysts that are lying to you when they publish opinion polls, because believe you me, maybe you are the only visitor to Jerusalem. Mm. I know everybody in Kenya, almost everybody that matters. I have all their telephone numbers. So if I wanted to call someone, it's very easy to call any one of them. All right? I know even Uru's number. Mm. So, so if I wanted to work with any of them and wanted to apply for a job, I could call any of them. It would be I have not placed a call on any of them. Right. Uh, talk to me a bit about the intrigues that you see happening in terms of these coalition formations holding together uh, to deliver. This now I'm asking you from a political commentary perspective um, because we've already started seeing the jostling for the number two position because as you say it, this vote is for William Ruto to actually lose if he wants to lose, but he's already won from what you've analyzed. When I talk to the people who are pro Azimio, they also say this thing, Raila Odinga has gone with it already, it's for him to lose. Uh, from where you sit, what would be the mistake, especially when it comes to holding uh, these formations together, particularly on this number two position? We've already started seeing uh, Malala uh, saying that um, this thing has to go to Musalia Mdavadi, uh, or we have to put them to, you know, a competitive analysis to be able to decide who's able to best fit to support William Ruto in delivering the economy. Um, uh, w from where you see it, the Kikuyus also are saying, especially Moses Kuri has said it, the number two position has to come to the mountain because of our numbers and what we provide on the table. W what's your take on this, Dr. So let me answer it this way. Um, number one, uh, I, I think the Azimio people who are saying Raila has taken power are lying to themselves. Uh, but mostly they are saying it for public consumption. Um, I, I've seen even in the villages, and I talk with some people in the villages, even in the villages, the laws are not 
did not even register in large numbers for the vote. They know Raila cannot win. Uh, a, a lot of people know that William Ruto is going to beat Raila better than you can beat a Burukenge. I mean, so, so it, it's a lie. I, I think the consolation they have been giving themselves is that Uru is going to rig for them. And unfortunately, they are going to find that uh, a very um, a, a very hard uh, uh, hard fact to swallow uh, when August comes. So, regarding how the coalitions will work, number one, the number two position is not that coveted. So anybody who tells you that number two is coveted is lying to you. For number six? Because, no, the deputy mm. presidency <clears throat> position mm. is not that coveted by either side. Uh, because if you recall, the reality is that the Kikuyus do have a president right now, isn't it? Yes. If it's a question of ethnicity. Mm. But this president has been the worst president for Kikuyus since independence. He has destroyed Kikuyu businesses. He has evicted Kikuyus who cannot afford even a place to live in. He has brutalized them. There are a lot of Kikuyus whose bodies are found in rivers floating and nobody has said how they died. He, he, he arrests them. He, he humiliates Kikuyus, including the recent one, Tabitha uh, of Keroche. You understand? So, so nobody can tell you that being a deputy president is more important than being a president. Yet they have a president now who is just abusing them. He abuses them orally, verbally, and he abuses them physically. He abuses them economically. And he's using them to get richer and his family to get richer by monopolizing the production of milk and the insurance and banking business. So, so I think the Kikuyus understand power. And they know that right now, in this government, the person who probably is closer to the president in terms of power are two people, Kibicho and Matiani. Mm -hmm. And they are not deputy presidents. So they know that. So, so why would you negotiate for a deputy president when you know what is happening to Ruto? Uh, who has made it a very an attractive position right now because you can't rule out the fact that history will repeat itself the same way Jaramogi was mistreated the same way Murumbi was mistreated the same way Moi was abused the same way Karanja was abused the same way Kibaki was abused and now uh, uh, Ruto so that's number one so anyone who tells you that the most important position that people are negotiating for is the DP's position is lying to you. Mm -hmm. Number two, I have to take them at their word. I have worked with all of them. Mm -hmm. I know Musalia Mudavadi is slow to act, but when he normally tells you I'm doing this, he's doing it. He refused the swearing in. I'm the one who went with Raila to convince him to support it. And he told me to my face that he didn't like it. And he didn't come. It's not like we were not expecting him to come, that we were expecting him to come. He had already told us at a meeting that he was not coming. So he didn't lie to us. You see, a lot of people have been very unfair to Mudavadi. Mm. They are saying he did this, he did this, as if he lied. He didn't lie. He actually told me the truth. Miguna, I don't know about this. You know me, I'm a conservative man. And he is. And he is a conservative. And he says so. Mm -hmm. He does not pretend to be something he is not. Mm -hmm. The problem I have is with people pretending and they are not who they are. Raila Odinga, pretending to be radical. He's fighting for people. And he's not. So he's lying. People like uh, Kalonzo saying, I don't know what I signed, blah, blah, blah. And then he does exactly the opposite. Uh, so the, the long and short is that I think Musalia Mudavadi knows what he's doing. I think that he made a decision, a mm -hmm. conscious one, mm -hmm. to support William Ruto. Mm -hmm. And that if they discussed portfolio or whatever, that remains at the realm of 
the confidentiality between them. When they disclose that, we will know. I will not take anything Malala says uh, to the bank. You wouldn't take what Malala says to the bank. And he no, gave I the wouldn't. signs of a potential working formula together with Musali Amberudi and the DP by showing signs in Mumias, and it came to pass. There are those who say that he could be speaking for someone, and that could be the deputy president and the NC brigade. Yeah, but you see, for someone who has sat at the cabinet table, and I have, I've been a secretary to a cabinet committee, right? Mm, mm. Uh, sometimes you don't say those things because you want the, the, the results that people think you want. Sometimes you want the opposite. Yeah. You see, it, it, there is something called a trial balloon. You can float it, but you know what you want, right? But anybody who is following the balloon is following, uh, you know, uh, fiction. So, so I, I will not read Malala the way you are reading him. Uh, Malala is probably sent there to uh, fly a balloon and see reactions as the scheming happens. Uh, it is the scheming part that I'm interested in. Right. And with this scheming part that you're interested in, then you know William Ruto will not go for it alone. He needs to have a deputy. What do you think is the winning formula? Who do you think, in your opinion, from where you sit? You see, there is the reality and there is what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, realistically, I think it would be rather presumptuous of Kikuyus to insist on having a deputy president. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we've had too many Kikuyu presidents if we go by ethnicity. I know people will argue uh, that all Kenyans are free, and, and, and I agree, uh, you know, constitutionally, legally, yes. anyone is allowed to run for president and become president, including Kikuyus, including Kalanjis. I agree. Uh, but the optics is that Jomo Kenyatta was a Kikuyu, Kibaki was a Kikuyu, Uhuru is a Kikuyu, and he's still president. I think optically it looks bad mm. if the Kikuyus insist that they must be the running mate. Mm. And that is with Raila, similarly with Ruto. Because you know what that, what that brings, the danger is, particularly with Raila. Everybody knows he's old, and they're saying he's a transitional president. Five so which means one, yes. that, so which means in the next five years, yes. it will be another Kikuyu president. So, so what have you done? Because Uhuru said uh, that he wanted somebody else. So what is it that you would be doing if he's insisting that Raila is president and then immediately after that, Raila could either die in power because mm. he's too old mm. or it could be, he could be removed or he could leave after one term. Either way, Akikuyu becomes the next president immediately afterwards. That's not something that is good. But in terms of mobilizing um, I think the Kikuyus expect a DP. And if I were Ruto, I would pick Gachagua as the DP. If I were him, I'm not him. Mm. Uh, I think Gachagua is the best communicator of that team. Um, I think he's the best mobilizer. I think Gachagua understands power politics more than anybody else at that table. He was Uru's aide, but he's a very, very insightful man. Mm. I've studied him closely. Uh, and I think when it comes to real politics, it's Gachagua. But if it comes to optics, uh, then it would have to be someone else. I don't know. I don't want to propose anybody. But it could be Mudavadi. It could be somebody from the coast. Mm. It could be Nanok. I don't know. All right, Dr. Ari. Uh, allow me to read uh, some comments right here as we close. Um, <clears throat> I have... Um, Omondi Guadao says, <clears throat> you are wallowing in myopia, General. You know not uh, what happened in Kenya today. Ground shifted, and most probably you are in the 2016 politics. Uh, would you want to respond to him? I can't dignify that with a response. Right. Another one says, next time you want to dress down your enemy, hire me Guna. This is another one from Roberto Ongera says, ask Dr. what is... Uh, his stand or who can he probably support for August polls 
and also ask him whether he is planning to go for Nairobi uh, gubernatorial seat. I think, Dr. you mentioned, uh, you, you responded, no, really responded yeah. to that one. Tom uh, Kuala Pole, bro, uh, he saw Raila as president, but where is he now and where is Raila now? Miguna is a valiant and Raila an angel. Uh, trust Raila at your own risk. Miguna, now a devil despite the risk he, on behalf of Raila, took. Miguna, you are one of us. God bless you. This is what uh, he says. Miguna is an eloquent liar, a hater in chief. This is Tom Kuala. Um, another one from Wende Mashare says, Miguna is a very sober man. God will bless him one day. Those torturing him will be put uh, to shame. Uh, Dr. Terry, you, you, you mentioned something um, that you say that no matter what the man had done, he will still or he was still a human, and being deserving of the same moral, legal,